If you've ever tried motion graphics in Blender, you might realize that they're pretty hard, and if you've ever tried to file a motion graphics tutorial, they can sometimes be even harder. Which is why in this tutorial, we're gonna move at a slow pace and go step by step so absolute beginners can follow along on how to create this object explosion. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to swap any object in there. If you stick around to the end of the video, we'll go through how to create this ambiguous but copyright friendly plastic brick. So with that being said, let's dive in. Great, so I'll have the shortcuts down here in the bottom right. We're going to delete the default cube. We're gonna hit Shift A, go to Mesh, and we're going to add a UV sphere. Now with this selector, we're gonna go ahead and hit F2, and that'll allow us to name our object, and we're going to change this to Emitter. And we're going to be using this to emit our object explosion. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just organize my collection up here. So I have a collection called Cam and Scene. You may have to create those if you don't have those. We'll create a new collection here, and we'll call this Particles. I'm gonna go ahead, drag emitters into the scene just to keep my scene organized. Now with our emitter selected, we're gonna to come to the particle system here and we're going to hit this plus button. We can call this explosion and we can go ahead and name this down here, explosion particle. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and adjust our settings. And we have a lot of settings under here. Let's go ahead and if we hit play here, we can see that we're getting all of our particles emitting. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the in frame to something like 72, perfect. Now, since we're doing an explosion, we don't need particles to emit the entire time. So we're gonna go ahead and lower this number. So let's have it start at frame one, and then we'll go ahead and set it to end at five. Now, if we do that, what it's going to do is emit particles just for five frames there. And you can see how we're just getting a nice just cluster of particles. So next we're gonna adjust the velocity, which controls the speed and velocity at which our particles will emit. So you see right now, they're just kind of falling off of our object. Well, let's look at how that velocity is working, which is why we chose to use this sphere as an emitter, because it will give us an explosion of velocity in all directions. Because if we come down here to our velocity, we can then control the speed and velocity of our individual particles. In this case, we can choose what direction they all come from, and we are choosing to do normal. So basically what it is doing is emitting each from from one of these faces at the normal direction. So since we have a sphere, it's going to give us this kind of explosive look. Perfect. So now we just need to go ahead and crank that velocity up. So let's go ahead and set it to something around 20. If I go ahead here and hit 20, you'll see that it now explodes outwards in a big pattern. And you can see that it's kind of mimicking the shape of the sphere as it's following the velocity of the normals. Now you probably already know this, but if you're struggling to keep up, you can actually adjust the number of particles here. So by default, it's gonna be set to a thousand, but you can set that as low as you need for your computer to be able to keep up. Now this looks too uniform. We wanna create something a bit more random. If we come down here, we can actually randomize the starting velocity of our objects here. What that's going to do is just adjust the speed we have there. And you can turn that number to whatever you want, but I like to match the actual normal speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set this to 20 as well. And now when we hit this, you can see that we're getting a much more natural and random distribution. Perfect. So that kind of handles the velocity there. Next, let's take a look at physics. Now with the physics here, you can see that we have forces here. And what Brownian's essentially going to do is add some noise. So if I just go ahead and crank this up to something really high, like 150, you'll be able to see you see how all the particles are twirling around. So if you wanna create a more kind of twirly shape, you can do that. Since I'm just doing bricks exploding, I actually don't want much of that. So I'm gonna lower mine to something like 20 just to get a bit of randomness. Now let's look at how we can actually turn these into our copyright friendly bricks. So what I'm going to do is turn off the scene here and turn on my particles. And you can see I already have some objects set up here. Now. You can actually download these for free from places like CG Trader. They have a lot of options there. But like I said, stick around to the end of the video and I will show you how to do this. If you're enjoying the tutorial and curious about how I've used particles in other environments, you can check out my short film I released recently where I used particles for things like dust, objects, hair, and more. Anyways, let's get back to the tutorial. But what you wanna do is go ahead and drag every type of particle that you want into your particle collection here. Now I'm gonna go ahead here, grab this emitter here, and you don't need the collection to be active for this to work. So you can actually turn this off and then you don't have to worry about them appearing in your scene when you render. Now with the emitter selected, we'll come down here to render. And right now we're set to render as halo. We're going to change this to collection. 
Now we have the collection twirl down that should open automatically. And we can go ahead here and select particles. Let's look at some of the options we have here. What I want is pick random. So right now what it's doing is going through the particle list like one, two, three, four, and it's giving it a very uniform look. But if I turn on pick random, it'll just pick one at random and help give us a bit more of a randomized look. Great. Now you might notice that they're extremely tiny. And that's because for some reason, by default, the collection or object render as scale, which is controlled here under the render tab, is set to 0.05. So it's only 5% of the original size. I'm not sure why Blender does that, but we're gonna go ahead and crank that up to one. Next, we wanna go ahead and randomize these explosions just a bit more. So let's go ahead, grab our emitter here, and we're going to click on rotation. So if we turn on rotation here, and then what we can do is we can turn on randomize there, and you'll notice that it doesn't update, and that's because we're cached here. So we actually have to reset back to the first frame to see that update, and now you can see everything's coming off at varying degrees. We can actually bake the cache of any simulation, and with particles, it's very simple. So we can just click bake dynamics or bake all dynamics. In this case, it's gonna do the same thing. And as it bakes through, now we can go ahead and scrub through our entire animation there. And you might notice here, that everything is stopping at 57. Well, why is that? And that's because if we scroll back up to the top of our emitter here, we'll see that the particles only have a lifetime of 50. So the cache is basically killing all the particles and then just stopping the cache. So how we can fix that is if you wanna make adjustments after you've baked, you actually have to delete the bake. So first you delete the bake and we can go ahead and make adjustments here. Now we have 72 frames. So let's just go ahead and make the lifetime of these bricks 72 frames. That way we don't lose any. And now you can see that they are going ahead and staying on frame the whole time. And then if I rebake that simulation, now we can go ahead and scrub through all of our bricks there. To follow along with materials, I'm going to switch this to render view here, and I'm going to drag this window out and then drag this up. Now up here, I'm going to do a shader editor, which will allow us to modify the materials. And then down here, I'm going to do an asset browser. Now this is my asset pack. I have a paid version, but I also have a free version, which you can download and use to follow along with these next steps. Now we created this particles collection and mind you, you can put any objects you want in here and they will mix in. If I go ahead and just add a random UV sphere, you'll see that that starts appearing in our particles. So if you don't wanna follow along with these bricks, you can go ahead and use whatever object you want. Now what I'm going to do is grab all of our particles up here in the top right, and then I'm going to press the forward slash button. And what that is going to do is enter a local view, so it will make it so that we only focus on the objects that are selected. Great, now if I hit period, I can go ahead and zoom in there. So let's begin adjusting the materials on these objects. We'll start with this one right here. I'm going to go ahead, come up here to the render mode and turn off scene world and that will give me one of Blender's default HDRIs so that we just have a little bit of lighting there. Now this is a pretty simple process. I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to search for plastic and I'm just going to drag this plastic on here and you can see that now we have a plastic shader and if you are using a properly UV unwrapped object, you can go ahead and leave this to UV, otherwise you can drag it into generated or object and it should get you something that looks decent. But what we wanna do is go ahead and randomize colors. So we are going to drag this color off here and we are going to do a color ramp and plug that into there. And now what we're going to do is drag this factor off and we're gonna search for object info and you're gonna see a couple options here and we're going to select random. Now we are going to go ahead and choose some colors here. So let's just choose some bright primary colors and add a couple stops there. Just pick a couple colors that you like for each one. And then what you can do is grab this little arrow here and distribute stops evenly, and then come up here from linear and change that to constant. Now, what we are going to do is copy this material to all of our particles at once. So we'll grab everything we want in order, and then we'll grab the object with the material we want last, making it the active object. We'll hit Control L, and we will hit Link Materials. Now they will all copy that. Now let's go ahead we'll turn off our particle group again and hit forward slash. And you'll see that now all of our particles are emitting at random colors based off of that color ramp. Perfect. Now, lastly, we wanna go ahead and get rid of this emitter here in our render. So if we come over here to the particle tab 
we'll come down here to the render view and the viewport display. Now, I wish there was just one button to turn off show emitter, but you have to do it both in the viewport display and the render. So click off show emitter there. And now you can see that we have our explosion. Perfect. Now let's dive into how to make these bricks. So I'm gonna start a new project file here and we're actually going to use the default cube this time. What you wanna do is come up here and turn on snap, tab into edit mode. And if you press Z, you can switch to wireframe mode or click that up here. And then we can move our vertices around just like this. Now what I'm going to do is press into front view mode here. So I'm gonna press one on the numpad there. And we only want this to be about half that height. So we'll grab these bottom here and we will move that up until it matches that halfway point right there. Perfect. Now what we are going to do is with those still selected, we are going to right click and hit subdivide once. Now, if we turn off wireframe mode, we should see that we have four faces. Perfect. Let's keep those selected. And with those selected, we're going to press I. And what that's going to do is give us an inset tool. And then we're going to press I again. What that's going to do is inset our faces individually. So we'll go ahead, bring those in just slightly. And then with those faces still selected, we will press E and extrude up. But you might want to turn off snapping for this. So we'll go ahead, turn off snapping, press E. We'll just move that up a bit until it's out of view. And that's gonna give us those holes for the bricks to fall in. Perfect. Now we just need to go ahead and create a cylinder here to go on top. So we will press seven to go back into our top view and we'll press wireframe mode here. Now I'm going to switch back out to object mode using the tab button and I'm going to hit shift A, go to mesh, and then I'm going to create a cylinder here. Now what I'm going to do so I want it to scale into one of those sizes. So I'm just gonna go ahead, scale that down and move that over until I just get a size that looks pretty good there. Perfect. Now we will rotate down here and we will hit G, Z and just move this up until it pokes out just ever so slightly. Now what I'm going to do is tab into edit mode on that sphere. I'm going to deselect everything. I'm going to switch to face select mode, grab that face, hit control B and that will allow me to bevel and I'll just choose a small bevel and you can add the amount of bevels geometry you want with the scroll wheel. I'm just gonna add one. Great, now I'm going to tab back out to object mode, switch back to top view mode, and then I can just go ahead and duplicate that and you can move it with the gizmo here. Perfect, and then we can grab both. Hit shift D to duplicate that, move that up there. Then we can grab all of this, grab the bottom one there with the last one. And if we hit control J, that will join and we can rename this one by four and then if I switch back over to solid view here, we can go ahead here and shade smooth by angle. And you can see now we have a perfectly usable brick.